ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اما بعد فقد قال الله جل جلاله في كتابه اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الف لام م ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين وقال الله جل جلاله انا نحن نزلنا الذكر وانا له لحافظون وقال الله جل جلاله انما وليكم الله ورسوله والذين امنوا الذين يقيمون الصلاه ويؤتون الزكاه وهم راكعون ومن يتول الله ورسوله والذين امنوا فإن حزب الله هم الغالبون وقال الله جل جلاله محمد رسول الله والذين معه أشداء على الكفار رحماء بينهم إلى آخر الآية وقال الله عز وجل والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه وأعد لهم جنات تجري تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا ذلك الفوز العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الإيمان أن تؤمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر وتؤمن بالقدر خيره وشره إلى آخر الحديث أما بعد Respected brothers, sisters, scholars, elders, علماء, حفظة, teachers, students بفضل الله عز وجل By the grace and mercy of Allah We have once again reunited here in this masjid with no other intention than to worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone for this we must be grateful by saying Walhamdulillah Our discussion today must be timely and when it comes to having a discussion which is timely with situations and circumstances around the globe it's often hard to choose a topic However, some of our regular musallis here, a group of them have come to me not too many days ago and requested for a particular discussion to be taking place in our coming khutbah and because it was timely and suitable for the time I have agreed inshallah azza wa jal and this is the discussion inshallah I request you first of all to listen very carefully and if you are to convey anything from this masjid to outside to convey all of it or to forward the link so that the entire khutbah can be listened to because it could be taken out of context and misunderstood our discussion today is to understand the difference between Ahlu Sunnati Wal Jama'ah and the Shi'i Muslims or the Shia. This discussion is a sensitive one and it needs to be understood because when there is jahala and ignorance about something, often nothing is done about it or sometimes too much is done. And so one needs to be educated and informed so as to know what is the opinion and the aqeedah or the ra'i of the ulama of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah regarding fellow Shi'i Muslims. And so you've noticed that I've said that they are Muslims and that's because they are from the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The fact that they have accepted Allah Azza wa Jal as their Lord, as one and only, the fact that they have accepted Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as their messenger the fact that they believe in the akhirah the fact that they believe in the fact that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last of the prophets they believe in the angels and the kutub that were sent before these are common grounds and I want to start with the common grounds these are shared beliefs between both sides we the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah our aqeedah is very clear and very strong and our evidence is for our aqeedah are thorough. They have been critiqued and criticized, studied and analyzed throughout the ages and they've stood the test of time and so the group of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah 
across the world from the 1.6 billion Muslims that we have, from the 1.6 billion Muslims that we have, the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah constitute some 85 to 90 percent of the Muslim world. And our fellow Shi'is, they constitute some 10 to 15 percent of that population. And from that population of Shi'is, some 85 percent of them are who call themselves the Twelvers, or Al Ithna Ashariya, or Al Imamiya. And there are, of course, other categories and other subdivisions within them. There are also some who call themselves the Ismailis and others. But the point being is, let's first of all clarify our stance about these key things that we differ upon. We believe, as Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, that Allah is alone. And Allah Azza wa Jal is unique. And the aqeedah is very strong and clear that we have. We believe that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the final messenger. And we believe that what the Qur'an has come with is a hundred percent authentic in its narration and authentic in its words too. It's authentic exactly how Allah Azza wa Jal spoke to Qur'an. Exactly likewise it was revealed from Jibreel or via Jibreel to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And exactly it was recorded to the harf, to the letter. And it was recorded and preserved by the will of Allah through the Sahaba and the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, both in writing and in preserved memorization. And nothing changed, nothing was hidden, nothing was tampered with, altered or changed. And this is because Allah Azza wa Himself took the responsibility of preserving this Qur'an. He says, This is a book in which there is no doubt. He also says, verily we have revealed the Qur'an and we will surely protect it. And so Allah has protected this Qur'an. We also believe that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as we've said, is the Khatimun Nabiyyin, Sayyidul Mursaleen, the leader of the Prophets. We believe that his companions, both the Muhajireen and the Ansar, all of the companions, anyone who fits the definition of a Sahabi is someone that we look up to. We respect and we revere. Those were individuals who the Prophet was pleased with and they were pleased with the Prophet. They were people who Allah was pleased with and they were pleased with Allah. Allah says in the Quran, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوهُ عَنْهُ وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتِ إِلَىٰ آخِرِ الْآيَةِ That the earliest of the Muslims, from the Muhajirin and the Ansar, and those who followed suit and came after, from the Sahaba, Allah Azza wa Jal is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. We do not specify some group of Sahaba and not specify others. This is our aqeedah and our belief regarding the Sahaba of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We believe that the first Khalifa was Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu arda and rightly so, as he was given bay'ah to by the Sahaba, the Kibar al-Sahaba, and followed by the remaining of the Sahaba after the death of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu We believe that the second rightly guided Caliph and Khalifa was Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu arda. May Allah be pleased with both of them. Third was Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu arda, and rightly so. And fourth was Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu arda, the cousin, the beloved cousin of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whom we love because he was a great Sahabi. He was the fourth of the Khulafa al-Rashidun. He was the cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu He was the first male you can say to accept Islam, the first of the children, the first male, or the, the, uh, after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu of course, the first of those who accepted Islam from the children and from the, from the men. He was in his status as we know it. Thereafter was Al-Hasan radiallahu anhu was the Khalifa, then Hussein radiallahu anhu for a short period, then Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, and it followed and carried on throughout the ages. Our opinion about the Sahaba, as we've said before, is very clear. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. Now, the whole divide or the difference between the Shi'i or the Shi'a and the Sunni or Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah didn't just happen overnight. There wasn't a specific day or a date in history we can say that one day they decided to differ and that, that city was two camps and two groups. In fact, it, it developed and grew over time. And the changes, first of all, began as a political difference. 
And these political differences began from very early on. We know that in the year 36 Hijri, there was a, a battle that, that took place that was called the Mawqi'a or the Ma'raka of the Jamal, the Battle of the Camel, in which there was an exchange or there was a battle, in fact, between Ali radiallahu anhu and his army and Aisha radiallahu anha and Talha ibn Ubaidillah radiallahu anhu and Zubayr radiallahu anhu. These were on the other side. Now, the plan initially wasn't to have, an, to, to have a war or to have a battle. It was actually supposed to be a discussion which then ten, turned into war because of some fatanin and fitan that took place and it turned out to be a full-fledged war. Thereafter, they, that was followed by the battle of As-Siffin, which took place on the outskirts or in Syria. And thereafter, there was another one called the battle of Nahrawan against the Khawarij. Now, throughout these battles and throughout these political struggles, we find that a certain group of people, they started to have a particular favoritism and an excessive amount of love for Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu arda. To the extent that some of them, they started to believe that he should have been the first Khalifa. <coughs> Others believed further, but these are not the largest of groups. Some of them even believed that he should have been the recipient of the Risala and others believe, and this is a very small minority, small, small minority fraction, they believe that Ali is God. Billah. Allah Azza wa Jal is one, alone. He is our Lord and no human being can ever claim to be or even have the audacity, let alone the Sahaba, to claim to be uh, God or anything like it. And so therefore, our opinion, our aqidah is very much clear. But these kind of differences or extra favoritism for Ali radiallahu anhu started. And this happened in the time of Ali radiallahu anhu. Some of them came to him and said, you are ilah, you are God, and he punished them for it. And so initially, this was a small group or a small difference of opinion. Thereafter, when time developed and went further, Muawiyah radiallahu anhu was Khalifa for 20 years, and thereafter his son became the next Khalifa. And when his son Yazid passed away, the next person to be or should have been Khalifa, according to that norm of the time, was Muawiyah, the son of Yazid. But Muawiyah, the son of Yazid, said, I don't want to take this responsibility on board. I would not like to, I, would, I don't want to be Khalifa. And so because there is no Khalifa, there is no ultimate leader of the Muslims, there was some fitna, riffraff here and there. And at that point, a group of people who called themselves the Tawwabin, the repenters. And the reason why they called themselves the, the repenters is because they wanted to repent for their inability to save Hussein radiallahu anhu in Karbala. He was martyred in Karbala. And so they wanted to repent by showing their support in a military expedition to go and oppose and kill, to surround the castle of the leader of Kufa of that time. And this was, in fact, you can say, one of the first times that the Shi'i or the Shi'a group came in the form of a group before there were thoughts, singular thoughts here and there. It took yet more time for this ideology or, th or this methodology or this, this, this madhab, you can say, this method of thinking or this set of uh, theological uh, principles for it to develop. It took yet more time into the year 200 Hijri, 240, 50 and etc. Now, like I've said to you before, quickly now, inshallah, that the Shia that are mainly across the globe today are the Ithna Ashariya, the Twelvers, or another name for them is Al-Imamiyya. And the reason why they call themselves Al-Imamiyya or Al-Ithna Ashariya is because they have a belief of Imama, which says that there are Imams and leaders who are appointed by Allah and they have certain aqaid and beliefs about this a'imma which we as Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah can't agree. For example, they may claim that they have ismat, meaning they are sinless. They are ma'asum like the Prophet Sallallahu This can't be true according to our aqidah that the Khulafa al-Rashidun, even they were not ma'asum. Only the Prophet Sallallahu was ma'asum. The 12 people that they call their imams is first of all Ali radiallahu anhu at the top of them and his laqab or his Nickname is Al Murtada. The second is Al Hassan ibn Ali, the son of Ali radiallahu anhu, they call him Al Sibt. And then Al Hussein, Al Shaheed. And then his son, Al Hussein radiallahu anhu, son Ali, Zainul Abidin. And then his son, Muhammad 
and they call him with the nickname Al Baqir. Then his son Ja'far, they they call him with the name Al Sadiq. Ismail, sorry, Musa Al Kadhim. Musa is his name. Al Kadhim is the nickname that they give him. Ali, the son of Musa, and the name of this or the nickname of this Ali is Al Rida. Muhammad, the nickname is Al Jawad here. Ali, they call him the son of Muhammad Al Hadi. The son of Ali once again, Al Hassan Al Askari. And the twelfth Imam that they believe is the awaited Mahdi, he they call him Muhammad Al Mahdi. So when Al Hassan Al Askari passed away with no children, they were waiting for another Imam to be born. And this Imam who has not yet appeared according to their belief is Muhammad Al Mahdi. And this they believe to be the Mahdi that will come and to rescue the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu But we believe that the Mahdi, or Imam Mahdi that will come towards the end of time, at the time of Great Fitan, his name will be Muhammad ibn Abdullah from the Quraysh. And he will come out in Medina. And he will be accepted as their leader, as the leader of the Muslims across the globe. These are some of the differences. I'll say a few more quickly, but we've run out of time now. Wa qawli qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa lakum. نحمد الله حمد الشاكرين ونصلي ونسلم على النبي الكريم محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Just to complete the discussion very quickly, إن شاء الله عز وجل. These, or this is the reason why the Shi'i call themselves the Twelvers or the Imamiyya. Some of the things that أهل السنة والجماعة we as أهل السنة والجماعة can't agree or can't accept from our fellow Shi'is are as follows. Some Shi'is may claim that the Quran has been changed. And it's been subtracted from, or deleted from, or hidden from. This, well, ayyadu billah, is batil. We can't believe in this. Some Shi'is may swear at the Sahaba and insult them and claim that only some three or four of them are acceptable and the rest are, they have done X, Y, and Z. If this is a claim, we can't accept this also. We believe that all of the Sahaba, Allah was pleased with them and they were pleased with Allah. We also have the concept of, or they have the concept of al-imama, which is ma'asum and the ismat of the imama. We can't agree with this also because our belief is that ismat is only, or ismah is only for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We've seen that there are some differences. We've also seen that there are some similarities. Now the reason for this discussion was to understand, not to propagate hate, not to encourage anybody for anything. It is to understand what the difference is, in fact, this is widespread available knowledge that you can get or you will, you'll probably be taught in school or in college or university if you studied those topics. I hope this has made some things clear. Allahumma khfil muslimin wa al-salati wa al-mu'minin wa al-mu'minat al-ahyai minhum wa al-amwat inna ka sami'un qareebun mujibu al-da'wat Allahumma ayyid al-islam wa al-muslimin Allahumma ansur ikhwan wa sadaqfina fi jami'a al-bladi ya rabbil alameen اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا وأصلح ذات بيننا يا رب العالمين وصل الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقيم الصلاة الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين 
اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين محمد رسول الله والذين معه أشداء على الكفار رحماء بينهم تراهم ركعا سجدا يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا سيماهم في وجوههم من أثر السجود ذلك مثلهم في التوراة ومثلهم في الإنجيل كزرع أخرج شطأه فآزره فاستغلظ فاستوى على سوقه يعجب الزرع ليغيظ بهم الكفار وعد الله الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات منهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله أكبر <تصفيق> سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله